important in a situation like this, especially when you have so many people. Right. <laughs> so now once the design is all completed, then we go to the factory, and that's where we are right now with Andy Hoff. So Andy, before you do any assembly, you do what's first called an easel audit, right? Yes, yeah, so the easel audit is a process after finishing where we take those finished components and we're comparing them against a line standard. When we compare them against that line standard, it allows us to make sure that we are hitting the correct color that the customer is ordering off of the samples they've seen. So this area is not just specialized with like the lighting, but also with the employees that are working, right? That's correct. The employees that are working in this area are highly skilled and highly trained employees that have been through an extensive hue testing to be able to detect very subtle variations in the color. Now, a lot of the products that come through here have some specialty finishes like distressing. That's correct. Customers can choose options, including distressing, that give the product a legacy or antique type of look. It is a specialty aged, really craftsmanship. The indications in the distressing are things such as dents, light sand through over the corners. And that's something that's done all by hand. The employees doing this job are using very basic tools. And the purpose of doing it by hand that way is that the product becomes very random. So it doesn't look patterned, it looks very natural. Finishing is obviously a huge part of the process. Yes, it's the first thing you see when you walk into somebody's kitchen. There's a wide range from just very basic stains and paints that you can choose from, as well as some of our specialty finishes. In the glaze process, it's a spray and we hand wipe that off. And you also offer some higher end, more specialty finishes. Yes, that's correct. Our employees in this department are really like artists. You'll see them walking around with their paintbrush in the back of their hair and they're going through and highlighting some of the features of the profile of the door, which really accentuates the profile. Some of our other specialty finishes include some dry brushing, where we'll put a base coat on, and we'll be dry brushing some other finishes over the top of that. What that does is it gives us different types of looks. So in our coastal collection, it gives it a semi-transparent appearance, and we also have a new Stony Brook collection, which is a multi-layer dry brush application, which really gives it the appearance of, of some more texture to that door. And then once everything's all finished, then we head over to assembly. Yes, that's correct. That is the next step of the process. And even though it's self-explanatory, can you walk us through assembly? Yeah, so in the assembly process, that's where they're putting the hinges on the doors. They're building up everything from the end panels onto the frame. They'll put the backs in, any doors or drawer fronts they'll put, put in at that time, the drawers are already built, and so they'll put those into the cabinets as well. And one thing you'll notice as we go through and watch some of the cabinets being assembled is we have two assemblers at most of our build tables working together. And the skill level really requires very little verbal communication between them. They're very coordinated at what they're doing, and you'll see a lot of nonverbal communication going on in that process. And it's a very, you know, quick, very coordinated process between them. Now these are some of the pieces we're actually going to see in the house, right? That's correct, yes. So now you've customized these a little bit for us. So you want to talk about what you've done? Yes. This, for example, is a bookcase. And most of our bookcases obviously come with a bottom rail. This is one that we've had removed for you guys. Also, our styles for our frames are an inch and a half wide. But on this particular bookcase, we've actually extended the right style to six inches. So as you can see, there's actually a further gap back here. What that does is it closes up a gap wherever it's being placed in the home. To make the install a little bit easier. Correct. In our install, we have some exposed panels, so you have some end panels finished for us. So most of the time, our end panels are actually recessed from the frame on the side. They're usually not exposed when you've got one cabinet right up to the next. Right. But at the end of a run, when you've got an exposed end panel, oftentimes we'll do what we've done here for you where we'll actually, in the factory, install a flush end that's finished to the same color as the cabinet. Nice. And that's going to save us some time during install. So what about the toe kick? You have a custom one here, right? Yes. Yeah, so m the majority of our standard base cabinets have a toe kick. And it's a recessed area here, pretty self-explanatory, but where your toe would normally go underneath the cabinet. In this particular example, we've done a factory-installed flush toe kick and that just saves time again in the installation of the field. Well, it is a very impressive operation you have. Here. Lots of moving parts and a very organized. Thanks for the tour. Yes, it was a pleasure having you.